Hello, Tom. In your book, My Big Toe, which starts with consciousness, you spoke about three paths that you can take to proceed on a spiritual journey. And those paths are that of the warrior, the path of surrender, and the path of service. You briefly mentioned these paths and what they mean in some of the immersives we've done recently. Can you give us a little more detail about these three paths? Surely, uh, I can. The three paths are, uh, one, the path of surrender, and that is a path where you basically just give yourself up to a larger source, if you will. You see that there is a larger source and you no longer uh, try to be in control. You just want to be a part of that source and function in accordance with that source. So that's the path of surrender. That's typically a religious path. Typically, it has been. The next is, is the uh, path of service. And in the path of service, it's a matter of doing good things. That means caring about people, trying to help, trying to be part of the solution, being a, a positive force for helping others uh, grow up or just helping others uh, get through life, whatever. That is a, you know, that's the second path, the path of service. The third path is the yogic path, and it's called often the warrior's path. And that's a path by where you, you try by force of will to discover your fears and then get rid of them, again by force of will. You have an intent to get rid of them, you have an intent to get rid of your ego, you have an intent to get rid of your beliefs, and you just work on that with your intention with your focus, with your willpower, to just refuse to be under the force of that ego and those beliefs. So it's, it's a struggle. That's why it's called the warrior's path. You have to fight your way out from under the fear, fighting it at every, you know, at every interaction. You find the fear and the ego kind of coming up and making your choices or being, being the, the motivation for your choices. And when you find that, you have to stop it you have to uh, not uh, let that happen and change yourself through force of will and intent. So those are the three basic paths. I can give a, some more um, information about those paths and, and how they work that hopefully will help people discover their own path because everybody's path is really a combination of those three. It's not that you pick one and that is your path to the exclusion of the others. We all have parts of all three paths in our process, and everybody's process is unique to that individual. There is no right process. There is only your own process. The right process, by definition, is the process that works for you. That's the one that's right for you. And it's a combination of those three general attitudes, the service of, of surrender and of the warrior's approach to, to uh, struggling against the ego and the beliefs and the influence that the ego and beliefs have on one's choices. Because we all have components of each of those paths, um, we should know a little more about them. And I think it will help people if they understand a little more about each path and what I mentioned in my book. People tend to be confused about the process forward. How do I get rid of my fear? How do I get rid of the ego and the belief? What's the, you know, what's the way forward? Okay, well, let's just take those one at a time and see some of the, you know, some of the advantages and disadvantages of each path. Perhaps this will let people understand better what they need to do. So let's start uh, with the path of surrender. Okay, that was the first one I mentioned. 
So the path of surrender is basically one where you let go being in charge. So what you do is just give up your ego. Instead of I, I want this or I need that or I should something, you just surrender and just be. So the path of surrender is also the path of being. When you surrender, you are in the being level. The, the path of surrender is a path where you give up your intellect. Your intellect that is the, the judging, the guiding, the analysis, you know, the intellect trying to manipulate its world to be the way it knows it should be, you know, the be, you know to be the way uh, it thinks is, is best for self and for everybody else. That's the intellect, trying to figure things out, do the analysis, and try to you know, live your life uh, through, your, through your intellect. Okay, the, the path of surrender lets go of the intellect. It's a being level path, just be. And when you're being, you are authentic. That's the authentic you. So the path of surrender is where you find the being level and the authentic you. Now those are good things to find, to learn to live out of the being level and to uh, be authentic, to be really just who you are. Let go of all the images, let go of all the social conditioning, let go of all the things that, that your environment tells you you should be and all of those things you think you should be and just be who you are. Okay, that's a very empowering place to be. The, so that's the upside of the path of surrender. It's a simple way to get rid of your ego. You just let it go and be. Now here are some of the downsides to that path. If you already are starting from a place of ego and fear and belief, which is the condition of almost everybody, so that's the 99.9999% of us are in a place of fear and ego and belief. So if, you already, if that's where you start to say, well, just let go and be is a very difficult thing to do. You know, that's like one huge step from where you are, fear, ego, and belief, to where you'd like to be, which is in the being level, letting yourself be authentic. Just taking that in one step is very difficult to do. Okay, it's a big step. In a way, it looks like that that path of surrender is a shortcut because all you have to do is just be, let go, surrender to you know, the larger consciousness system, be the way you are. Well, not only is it difficult, but it has another even more um, uh, difficult problem than just it's hard to do, and that is when you are on this path, you are always on, you're walking a path that's really on a knife's edge. You're walking on a path that has very steep slopes to either side of your path, and those slopes are very slippery. So it's one of those things that if you take just a small misstep, you're very likely to go down that slippery slope and not even be aware of it. You see, that is one of the downsides of this, of this path. Well, those slippery slopes basically represent this ego that you come in with. This ego that you come with, the fear that you come with, the beliefs that you come with, they're still there. Just because you one day decide that you're going to, to surrender doesn't necessarily um, suddenly transport you into a, a, you know, the being level. You have to make this, this, this progress. And this, this uh, slippery slope is such that if you do start making choices out of your ego, which you most certainly will, because that is the way you are now, and you have to change yourself to be some other way, you are likely to get into a position of of, can we say, of acting the role of being 
rather than being the role of being. And I've talked before about the difference between acting and being. So if you just decide, okay, I'm going to let my intellect go, I'm just going to be, I'll, I'll live in the intuitive space at my being level, and I won't try to arrange or manipulate or do anything. I'll just take things as they come and deal with them as they come, and that's it. Well, your ego is still there. A pronouncement doesn't help. You actually have to be it. That ego will now justify everything that you do in terms of your new belief, which is a belief that you are surrendering. Surrendering becomes a belief and your ego will interpret everything as in consonance with that belief. So you see, it's an easy path to, what's the expression, fall off the wagon. It's an easy path to end up thinking and believing that you have surrendered when actually you have not really surrendered. You're just acting like you have surrendered. So it's a very easy path to confuse yourself as far as what you're really doing and what you're not. Now, if you, you live in this space enough, the space of surrender, you can find peace and you can get rid of your ego. And that's what monks do. That's what religious people do when they go to the monastery and they spend 10 hours a day in meditation and prayer and they have given up their worldly interests. You know, they don't have husbands or wives, they don't have, you know, businesses they have to deal with, they don't have mortgages to pay or cars that they have to put gasoline in, they don't have any of the, of those requirements of the outer world because they have given up all of that and they are just going to be. So that's the, why it's the religious path is often this path of surrender. Well, we all know that just because somebody meditates 10 hours a day and is in a monastery doesn't make them enlightened. It doesn't make them grow up. Many people can, can live that life and get very um, you know, comfortable with that life, be astute and successful in that life, but not really grow up a whole lot or not in a very general way. They may grow up in that they may be wonderful meditators, but if they don't change themselves, if they themselves aren't becoming different, they're not really changing themselves, then they're not really growing up. So it's an easy space in which one can act without actually being. And it's very difficult for anyone to tell the difference. Because again, if you have that ego is still there, that ego is justifying the belief that you are there, that you are just living out of the being level. And okay, you wear a monk's habit and you do the things monks do and you are, um, you would seem very, a very spiritual person to the outside. Somebody looking in at you would say, oh, well, there is a very spiritual person but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a spiritual person on the inside. Only a belief, perhaps, that there's a spiritual person on the inside from that insider's viewpoint. So that's the slippery slope. It's very difficult to tell whether you are actually doing it or whether or not you're acting in it. Now, the, the second one well, let me, before I leave the, the, the path of surrender, on the path of surrender, you will more quickly get to the paranormal because the paranormal is something that needs to be approached from the being level. If you don't approach the paranormal from the being level, then you'll never be very successful with it. It'll always be um, kind of uh, haphazard. It'll always be, uh, it happens whenever it happens to happen, if it happens at all, but you don't really have any control over it. You really can't do it when you want to, on demand sort of thing. You're really not a master of it. But it, when you spend time at the being level, tell the intellect to let go, you can live that life, 
You can let the intellect go. You can live in this intuitive space. You can be very intuitive. You can be good at paranormal things and still not grow up. You see, being able to do paranormal things doesn't make you grow up. Growing up has to do with you changing yourself, getting rid of the fear and the ego and the beliefs. So you can exist in that space, even in an intuitive space. You can gain being level states. You can gain authenticity in your behavior to a point that the paranormal starts to work pretty reliably for you. Now, if you're not really growing up any, you're just acting, then you are limited in how well you can control and how powerful you are in that paranormal. But even if you're just acting, the paranormal will become much easier because you're learning to set your intellect aside. But just setting your intellect aside doesn't make you grow up. You see, you can set your intellect aside, you can live in an intuitive space, but it doesn't mean that you're letting go of any of that fear. That fear is still down there. You're just not necessarily aware of it or suppressing it. You're not changing yourself. So you can, you can get better at paranormal things by this path of surrender probably more quickly because it very quickly takes you into a, a space that is intuitive. That's where you have the power in paranormal things. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you grow up. So I guess the key thing here is that just because you can get out of your intellect into your being level doesn't make you grown up. You still have to change yourself. You have to be different. You have to let go of the fear, not just take that fear, put it in a box and hide it in a dark room to where you don't notice it anymore. Can you give a practical example of how you would put a test to whether you are growing up or simply existing at the intuitive level? Yes, I can, uh, I can do that. The same tests that I mentioned in the book. The test that you can give yourself is to look at yourself. Again, now this is, I guess there's some problematic uh, issues here too, because again, you have that intellect that is very clever at convincing you that you indeed are who you believe you are. That's what our intellect does. It justifies our behavior, it justifies our thoughts. But you can ask others about you. Have I changed? Do I seem different? And not just that now I meditate for long times and I don't talk as much and I seem to be deeper in some way. That's not it. Am I kinder? Am I more helpful? Do I give, you know, without needs to be given to? If you can ask those sorts of questions, then you can, just, you can find out whether or not you're successful at, at uh, growing up or whether you're just very good at acting at being growing up. So you can be honest with yourself if that's possible, but again, you have this ego that will convince you that you are uh, you know, just and correct and perfect and doing fine. That's what your ego does. But you can also look at yourself and look at your feelings. Do you have feelings that are negative? Do you find other people to be you know, wrong? Do you see the problems of others as far as their problems? Do you feel superior that you are more authentic and more knowledgeable and more spiritual and more whatever than other people? Do you take some pride in that you know how to do paranormal things that other people don't know? You know, all of these things will tell you that you're not really all that grown up. Um, do people annoy you? Do you have stress? Do you see other people and you say, well, I see that, you know, they're acting like they're grown up and high and mighty, but, you know, they, they really aren't, uh, you know, they're not really that uh, 
that evolved and not as evolved as I am? You know, do you have those kinds of feelings? If you do, that speaks of ego. That speaks of not really being grown up. So if you find people annoying, if you find our society something that's just too ugly to, to embrace, if you find the fact that there's ugliness everywhere in our world and that people are full of ego and people are full of fear, if you find that upsetting and annoying, then you're not as grown up as you need to be. As you grow up, you just accept that. Understand it is the way it is and it isn't something that bothers you or causes any kind of negative feeling. In fact, it causes compassion. You feel compassion for people. So in your mind, do you, are you compassionate with people who are struggling? Or are you, what should we say, are you um, annoyed with people who are struggling? Are you critical? Do you find you criticize? Do you complain? All of these are signs of not being very grown up, you see. So those are the ways that you tell whether or not you're, whether or not you're very grown up or not. It's just your life. How do you live? Do you live with a lot of stress? If you live with a lot of stress, that means you feel that things are not the way you want them to be and need them to be, and that causes you stress. You're not accepting. You're struggling, and that's a sign of not being very grown up. Now, let's go to the, the second, but, but the, the key idea here is that just because you're successful at paranormal activities, and just because you have quieted your intellect and have good meditation space, that you can meditate, you can get to point consciousness, and you can get into that being level, into that zone, doesn't mean you're grown up. Okay? Those are just skills that anyone can learn with practice. Okay? Doesn't necessarily mean you grow up. You have to change yourself and become someone else. So that's the kind of the slippery slope of the of the path of surrender. Okay, now it's hard just to surrender if you start with ego. The ego doesn't surrender, you see. It just pretends to surrender. Now, that path, if you want an example of that path of surrender, I would say that it's probably more represented by the tradition of Tantra, say, than it is by the tradition of, uh, of the, yogic, the yogic tradition, the tradition of, of becoming a yogi. Um, the, the yogic tradition is more of the um, warrior's path. The yogis struggle to get rid of their ego, to you know, get rid of an overpowering intellect. The, the yogis have to fight fight, fight to get rid of that stuff. And they become aware of it and then they have to rip it up by the roots. The tantric tradition, you just surrender and let it go. So there's two different paths. And all three of these paths, I should say, will take you to where you want to go. I'm just talking about, not that one's better than the other. I just want to talk about the, kind of the, a little more of the details of each one of the paths. So if you're particularly interested in the path of surrender, then the tantric would be a good place to go. Um, those who are in the tantric tradition think that the yogic tradition is full of fighting and struggle. And they would say, struggle isn't necessary. You don't need all that struggle. Just let it all go, you see. That's what they would say. Just surrender and you're already there. You don't have to struggle. Just surrender. But again, the downside of that is easy to say, harder to do. And though it seems like a fast track, most people don't actually surrender. What they do is they take their fear and their ego and their beliefs and they stuff them down in a place where they don't show. They, uh, they um, not just ignore them, but they deny them and then they live a life of surrender at the being level 
but they don't really grow up that much. That's the downside, that's the slippery slope. Obviously some people do grow up a lot on that path. That is a path that you can become um, spiritual on. It's a perfectly viable path to lowering your entropy. It just has its own difficulties of going down that path, taking that one big step and not tricking yourself into thinking that you're, you are um, grown up spiritually just because you can live more out of the being level and less out of the intellectual level. That's not enough. You have to get rid of the fear, not deny it. Okay, we go on to the, to the uh, second, which is uh, you know, the path of service. That is similar in the sense that it also has a very narrow path with a slippery slope on either side. And that's the difference again between being kind and acting kind. Again, it's very easy for the ego to convince itself that you are being kind, that you are spiritual, that you are grown up, when in fact you're not. So being kind means that you're not doing it because you think you should or because this is a path that you're going to grow up on. It means you're being kind just because you are kind, you see, and you can't change who you are by just wishing to change who you are. You have to work at that. You have to get rid of those fears. So again, this is a, another slippery slope where it's easy for the ego to convince one that one is growing up and on a path of lowering their entropy when indeed they are acting but don't know they're acting. They think they're being and they can justify that they are being rather than acting in their own minds, but the ego is hard to see. The ego is pretty much invisible. Again, the, way, the only way you can tell is look at how you are. Look at how you interact. Look at how you connect. You see, on, on both these levels, on the, on the path of surrender and the path of service, if you are going just inward, and you're becoming less and less connected to the rest of the world. You become uh, kind of floating in your own reality to where your life is very self-referential. It's easy to convince yourself of how far you have developed and how low your entropy is. You see, but the idea, if you're really growing up, you don't drop out, you engage. When you're really growing up, you have to reach out and interact with that ugly world. You have to be part of the solution. You don't just sink down into your own happy space of, you know, solitude and, and uh, you know, being level and doing good deeds and you're kind of happy with that. And you kind of drop out of the larger society because they're so messed up anyway. People are so awful and greedy and nasty that you kind of let all that go and you transcend all of that uh, nastiness and kind of float in your own bubble above it. Well, that's a bubble made out of ego. If you really grow up, you have to embrace that world. You have to stay plugged into it. You have to understand what's going on and why. You need to connect with people. You need to reach out. You don't need to just go into your meditation room and transcend the, you know, the, the unwashed masses that are full of fear and ego, unlike your, you know, enlightened self. You see, that is not really growing up. That's pretending to grow up. That's going through all the motions of growing up. So this, this, this path of service is a good path in that it helps a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's very civilizing being kind. You know, you help people out, it's all about others. You, you, um, uh, you, know, you don't uh, put yourself first, you put others first, and it's all about giving. Well, you can do that, and you can feel very evolved, and you can feel you know, good about yourself, and you can actually give a lot and help a lot of people. 
And that's true, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're growing up, that you're lowering your entropy. You're acting nice, you're being helpful, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your entropy is reducing significantly. It may be reducing in some measures because you're not being rude and you're not being whatever. You're being nice. So in that way you grow up a little, but you're not making the big steps that you should to lower your entropy and become love. You're just being nice to everybody, mostly because you think this is a way to grow up, so you're acting nice. So that's its slippery slope. Again, the ego is invisible. You don't see that. And the fear gets stuffed down to where you deny that it even exists. What fear? I don't have any fear. I'm just nice to people, you see. So those are the things to look out for, to be watchful for. Again, that would seem like a fast, you know, a fast track. If you just are nice, if you are caring, Okay, then that is a good thing. But if you are being caring because you think that is what you need to be to grow up, then that is not really what we're you know, talking about. We're talking about being caring because that's the way you are. And just acting doesn't necessarily make the being happen. Acting can help the being take place. So whether you're acting by surrendering or acting by service, it can help the being level take place. It can help the, um, the transition to actually lower entropy take place, but it doesn't make it take place. I guess that's the point. It can be on your path to growing up, but for many people, that path never actually gets there. They just go through the motions and don't actually get there. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a difficult path as all the paths are difficult. All three of these paths are not easy to do. None of them are like, oh, just follow this prescription and you shall become enlightened. It doesn't work like that. There's not only any such thing as enlightened, Really, it's just a constant growing and becoming and lowering of entropy. We live in, as you have said, a training lab, a learning lab. And it seems with each of these paths, you have mentioned that the key is to keep interacting and getting feedback. Mm -hmm. And in, in other words, noting change from either um, other asking others or uh, getting observations from mm -hmm. them or feedback from them. It seems that the interaction is, is the key rather than detaching. Um, with, with all of these mm -hmm. paths, would you agree with that? Yes, the, the point is as you grow up, you embrace things and people. You embrace, you know, the outside world, even, even as ugly as it is. You have to embrace things. Growing up doesn't mean finding your own safe space where you can be calm and peaceful and, you know, you live in an ashram or, a, or you're a monk in a, you know, in a temple someplace or you just set yourself apart from others and then you live in your own little superior world of, of uh, non-aggression and being nice and you know that sort of thing, being authentic. If you end up in your own little world, kind of at peace and removed from the, from the world, from the real world that's out there, kind of in your own little bubble, that is not really growing up. When you grow up, you have to connect. It's about other. It's not about making yourself a comfy little nest, living in a comfy little bubble with, um, what, with self-satisfaction that you have evolved and that you're above the fray, that you've transcended it all. 
that's not really growing up. Now that may be on your path to growing up. That may be a place you need to go through first before you really grow up. But that's not the end point. That's just part of the process. So if you find yourself that you have created this nice little, you know, peaceful bubble to, to uh, exist in, and that basically has taken over your life, you know, that bubble is your life, then you need to connect. You need to get out and embrace the world and see if you can't do something to help rather than just hide from it in your bubble. Now, if you have that little bubble that you can retreat to at a time, well, that's a good bubble to have where you can kind of find your, your center and, you know, and kind of re-energize yourself. Well, that's a very good thing. But it's not a thing to hide out in. You see the difference? There's a difference between hiding out in that bubble, staying in that bubble kind of isolated, transcended above the fray, and just staying there apart. That's not all that grown up. That's not low entropy. As opposed to having that peace at your core, being able to pull on that peace and that energy whenever you need to and want to, but you're still engaged in the larger world. You're still engaged with people. You can accept people as they are. They don't upset you, aggravate you, or you don't sit around uh, um, complaining about this and that. Oh, that's, you know, that's beneath me. I don't, you know, I can't, I can't be part of that group because they're too simple and I'm more advanced than that. You know, if you have these kind of attitudes, then you're not really very grown up. You just think you're grown up. See, that's the thing. So, yes, you do need to find that being level existence. Yes, you do need to find that kindness where you care about people. But that's not a place for you to escape to. Just being in that, that bubble of caring or in that bubble of surrender doesn't make you grown up. It just may help you on your path to growing up, but it's also a place you can get stuck. You see, you can get stuck there believing that you're grown up. And again, the difference is, do you accept things as they are? Are you part of the solution? Or do you just kind of ignore it all and remove yourself from the fray and just stay in your own bubble? Only hang out with people who are like you and share your bubble and kind of look at the rest of the world with disdain and horror that how could those poor, you know, unknowing and, and whatever people just stay out there hurting each other and you kind of withdraw from it. That's not lowering your entropy. I shouldn't say it that way. That's not taking you where you need to go. It may lower your entropy a little just to get to that bubble. You may have to lower your entropy a bit, but that's not a place to hang out. It's just a place to pass through on your way to being more useful and being more helpful to people. So we have the, you know, the path of, of, uh, of doing good works and caring about people and helping people. You know, I can think of a, of a good example about that. We think of Mother Teresa. She's kind of the poster child, if you will, for caring about people and being helpful. She spent her life dedicated to helping other people. But yet when you read accounts of the people who were with her and who worked with her, you will find that sometimes she was a very tough taskmaster. And she wasn't all that pleasant and she wasn't all that nice sometimes to the people that weren't doing it the way she knew it needed to be done. Okay. So that would tell you that yes, she was a very giving person and she helped thousands and thousands of people, but she still had enough ego in there that she, should, that she could get angry and upset with those who didn't get it, rather than accepting that those people are in their own struggle. Yeah, they don't get it, that's true, but you need to work with that. You need to develop that. You need to help them grow up. Barking at them or, you know, being rude is never on the path to a better success. 
You can be firm, yes. You can give instruction, yes. You can give correction, yes. But not in a way that is unpleasant. Not in a way that is negative. Not in a way that puts other people down or puts yourself above them, you see. So that's the slippery slope I'm talking about. You may be very, very kind. And that kindness may come from the being level, but there may still be pieces of that ego just rattling around in there, which means your work isn't done. You see, so you can be partway down these paths, but yet have more to go, more distance to go. And I guess my point is you always have to be aware of that. Don't think that, okay, I'm kind, I'm done. Okay, I've surrendered, I'm done. Because if you think that, then you will gain some entropy reduction in becoming kind and, and, and uh, um, you know, at the being level, uh, at the intuitive level when you surrender. But you're not done. That's just, that's just a space you're passing through on the way to growing up. And if you don't go past that, then your growth will stop. And you may be a monk for your entire life and spend you know, 50 years in a monastery and not have grown up all that much at all. Yes, so, you're not rude and, and yes, you do good deeds and yes, you know how to get to point consciousness, but that doesn't, that's not enough. You have to keep growing and keep changing yourself. You have to always be skeptical of yourself. Skepticism is the most important part. Yes, you need an open mind, but mostly you need to be skeptical of yourself, always. Where am I? When you're satisfied with yourself and you lose that skepticism, that's because you think you're done. When you're done, you're no longer critical of your growth and where you're going and what you need to be and how you can improve yourself. So when you get to that point where you lose your skepticism of yourself, that's where you'll stop growing up. No matter where you are in that path, maybe you've grown up 80% of the way before you feel done. Then that's where you're stuck, you see. Maybe you're only 10% of the way and you feel done and you, that's where you'll get stuck. So the point is, this is, these paths are not prescriptions for becoming love. They're just ways of approaching a problem, different ways of approaching the problem. And you can't get good at being giving or good at being in the being level and in the intuitive level and feel like you're done. That's all there is to it. That's a mistake and that's a trap. So then let's go to the yogic method. That's the, you know, the, uh, the warrior's path. Okay, that's where you focus on the fear. You see, the fear is the key thing. Getting rid of that fear is the key thing. Actually getting rid of it, not just stuck in it, sticking it in a box and denying it, putting it someplace that you know, it, it doesn't rear its ugly head, which often means putting yourself in a position where it can't rear its ugly head. When you go into a monastery, you go into a, a very benign environment. You don't have all the things slapping you in the face, you know, that you have when you're out engaged in the outside world. You don't, have, you don't have all the responsibilities. You don't have all the issues. You don't have the annoyance, the aggravation, the dealing with other people and other people's issues. You don't have all that. You go into a cloistered situation, suddenly life is much smoother, much easier. The challenges now are different. So you don't necessarily have the same uh, challenges there. You have an easier time of not showing your ego. You have, it's easier to pretend to be kind. It's easier to pretend that you are whole and that you are operating at the intuitive being level. It's easier to, to, to make those things, to grow those things, because you don't have the slaps, you know, the cold water thrown in your face, the demands that are put on you by other people to the same extent you do if you embrace the larger reality, if you embrace 
what's going on in your culture. So I would encourage people not to declare themselves done too quickly. And you notice that the yogic path is the path of recognizing your fear, naming it and ripping it up by its roots and getting rid of it. The other two paths don't really talk directly about fear. It's only indirectly, you see. They're not about recognizing and tearing up a fear. They're about acting, being. They're, they're about doing. They're about um, feeling. Okay? They're about service or about surrender. But they're not really focused on the fear. Getting rid of the fear is a, is a uh, result, is a subset of that. If you give up and surrender, well, then what are you afraid of? You're just going to accept whatever happens. So your fear kind of isn't that noticeable anymore. You've given up. But it doesn't mean you've gotten rid of it. It just means you've pulled its teeth, perhaps. You've made it so it doesn't bite like it used to. You don't go off in rages like you used to, but it doesn't mean you've gotten rid of it. You see, you've just pulled its teeth. You've put it in a place where it doesn't bother you so much and it's not so noticeable. And it's the same with the, with the uh, path of service. It doesn't really talk about fear either, but if you're kind and you're caring about other people and it's not always about yourself, then that kind of puts you into a space where the fears that have mostly to do with your, you know, they mostly express through your ego and through your beliefs, they don't really have much of a mode of expression anymore. So they kind of lie quiet in the basement of your consciousness. And you may think that you're done with them. Not necessarily true. But if you really do come to the point of being kind, or you really do come to the point of surrender, then the fears will often just go away. Yes, true, the fears can go away. It is a path to grow up. It's just that most of us have enough ego and enough fear and enough beliefs at the beginning that we don't really get rid of them as much as we pacify them, you see. So it's a, it can be a trap. That's the point I'm trying to get here. It can be a trap. You always have to be skeptical of you. Now, the yogis are a little different. The yogic method, the, the path of the warrior is fight, struggle, fight some more, always be skeptical, find that ego, find that place that annoys you or that upsets you or when you're being critical of somebody else. Uh, you know, you and your buddies talk about how somebody else just isn't doing it right, you know, that kind of thing. If you feel, if you, if you get into that kind of situation, then you realize, oh, that's my ego. That's tied to a fear. Let me go find that fear and rip it up by the roots. And now you'll spend the next two or three years trying to get rid of that fear because you can't get rid of it often very quickly. So years and years go by. So the yogic path is kind of the long path. It's the struggle path. Okay. But it's focused not obliquely on fear, but directly on the fear. So it's a little different approach. The other two get rid of the fear in the process of being uh, kind or being caring. And they get rid of fear in the process of surrendering. But the trick there is to actually get rid of it not just put it into a space where you don't notice it anymore. You really need to get rid of it. So that's a little more about these paths. Now the yogic path is a long path. It takes a long time to get rid of fear. You do this on a lifetime. Giving up yourself to a higher source, surrendering, is like a short path. Okay, I'm surrendered. From now on, I'm just not going to work out of my intellect, I'm going to work out of my being level, I'm just going to be authentic who I am. Well, being authentic is nice, but being authentic is just a step. That's just step one. You have to be authentic of who you are, but then you have to look at, well, who am I? Now that I'm authentic and just being true to myself, 
Is that good? Am I really helping people? Am I part of the solution? Am I, you know, living in a space of, of uh, love or not? Well, if, if your decision is not, no, I'm not, I'm just myself, but that's not enough. Being authentic isn't enough, you see. Now, being authentic is like being in the moment. Those are good things to be, but it's not enough. You can't just be authentic. You need to be authentic. Look at that authentic self. If it's not a pretty sight, change it. If it's not unconditional love, work on it. Then become a new authentic self with lower entropy. And then a year or two or three after that, become another new authentic self with lower entropy. And a five years after that, become a new authentic self with lower entropy. You see, that's what you have to do. And just becoming authentic and living at the intuitive level isn't enough. Right brain people do that all the time. Right brain people tend to be authentic. Who they are is, you know, what you see is what you get. They just are, and they're very intuitive. They live in that uh, space. They live in the moment. They're right brain. They see big pictures. And that doesn't necessarily make them low entropy. It doesn't necessarily make them, uh, you know, beings of, of uh, non-unconditional love. It just makes them people who are authentic and who uh, live at the being level. So we, we set goals for ourselves of letting go of the intellect. But really, what we want to do is, is not let go of the intellect, but let the intellect and the being level work together for a whole life. It's not that there's something evil about the intellect. The intellect's necessary. The intellect's important. We need an intellect. Intellect, being able to do analysis, being able to make judgments, those are all important. But we need, need to be able to do that in the service of love, not in the service of fear. So we don't, don't make the intellect your enemy. Just get rid of that parts of the intellect that are a problem. And don't make your being level the salvation because that's just a step in the right direction. Don't make your kindness and your caring an endpoint. That's just a step in the right direction. You have to continually be skeptical of what and who and how you are. What is your motivation? What is your intent? And if you ever find yourself in that self-referential bubble of feeling above it all, beyond it all, ahead of it all, superior to it all, then realize that you're not done. You have a ways yet to go to grow up. So that's maybe helpful to people who are trying to find a path forward. The path isn't a prescription. The path is a process. All three of those should be part of your process. You should be a caring person. You should develop your intuitive side. Your intuitive side and your intellectual side need to work together. You don't want either one to dominate who you are. You want a, a good working relationship between your intuitive side and your intellectual side. You need to move that awareness that you have as consciousness to the service of love rather than the service of fear. And that is a lifelong process. And whether you surrender, care about others, or struggle with your fears and your egos and your beliefs and try to rip them up by the roots, all of those paths will take you in a profitable direction, all three will take you to a lower entropy state. But all three can be traps. The yogic path, the path of the warrior can also be a trap. You can be so wound up <clears throat> in your struggle with fear and trying to overcome it that you succumb to the same thing. You begin to believe that you have succeeded where you haven't. The ego comes in and tells you, uh, you know, what a wonderful person you have become. And you can spend a lifetime not making much progress, constantly trying without really getting much results. 
And if that's your path, if you're just trying and trying but nothing's happening, well, that's probably because you, you're trying is more acting than being. You're trying because you think you should, because you want to. You want to be a low entropy being. You want to do that, but it's at the intellectual level of wanting, not at a point where your intent makes it happen. You see, the key in all three of these is you have to have an intention to grow up, to become unconditional love. That has to be your overriding intention. And if that is your intention, at a deep level, deep being level intention, then you will become that. That is the key ingredient to growing up, is having intent to do it. If you have an intention of wanting to be kinder and helpful to people, that's good, but that won't necessarily lower your entropy. If you have an intention to surrender to the larger force or the you know, the larger conscious system or to God or whatever it is you want to surrender to, that's not enough either. You have to continually grow, change yourself. Always look and see, how can I become better? How so, can I grow? Always be aware, mindful, and skeptical. Always be skeptical. Always be open. Being open means that you don't necessarily believe that you have all the answers, that there's things you have yet to learn. That's being open. There's always information out there that might be helpful to you. Once you feel like you're done, then that's a belief and you're closed off because you'll no longer see places where you need to grow because you believe you're done. So yes, you always have to be open. You always have to be critical of yourself. You always be, have to be skeptical. Am I really growing up or am I just, you know, talking the talk? Am I, do I sound like I'm growing up to other people? If other people believe I'm growing up, you know, that's not it. It doesn't matter what other people think. You have to ask yourself that. And then you constantly have to catch yourself be honest with yourself and keep working on it because the nature of entropy is as soon as you quit working on it, you start to backslide. You start to lose it. That's just the way entropy works. There isn't the end point where you're done. It's an endless path of becoming. And to become, you need to, you need to express that. It's not just an internal state. You have to express who you are in your interactions with other people. And it's through those interactions with other people that you are challenged. Your ego's challenged. Your beliefs are challenged. That's why you have to always stay open. And when you see those challenges, you have to be skeptical of how you meet them. Are you meeting them with caring? and acceptance and love, or are you meeting them with, oh, those poor people, they just don't understand yet. <sighs> I remember when I was stupid like that. You know, if that's your idea, then you're, you know, further away from being done than you think. That's putting people down in order to make yourself feel better. That's ego. Nothing more than ego. So, anyway, a little talk about the paths toward growing up, the paths toward lowering entropy. And these paths are never done. You work on it and work on it and continue to work on it. But the good news is that in the beginning, the work is hard. It's laborious. You catch that ego, you catch those beliefs, and you have to rip them out by the roots. You have to not let yourself be that. Not that you not let yourself do that, that's acting, but you have to not let yourself be that. So you need this positive intent to change and a specific intent and in how you want to change. I don't want to be like that. And if you hold that powerfully and strongly enough, you'll change and you won't be like that and you will get rid of that fear. You see, so that is something that never changes. 
It's just what we are. We're consciousness. And we're constantly in the process of growing up. It, after you get past a certain point, the process becomes joyful. It's not so much work. It's not like, oh, I've got such a long way to go, you know, I'm so, I'm so fearful, I'm this, I'm that, I just can't do this, you know, my buttons get pushed all the time, you know, I get upset, I get angry, I put other people down, you know. You can get overwhelmed with the problem, but don't let it overwhelm you. Just start from wherever you are, work on just one small thing and get rid of that fear and then work on the next one. It's a process that you just have to start. You don't have to really know how you're going to do it. You just do it. It's that will to do it that makes it happen. That's what happens. Going out and being kind, that's nice. You know, giving up uh, to a larger uh, um, source, that's a good thing. It makes you more humble. It makes your, your ego weaker, but that won't do it either. Neither will fighting and struggling to get rid of fears if you don't actually get rid of them. If all you do is fight, you know, you can fight and fight and fight, but if you're not really getting rid of them, then the fighting is just going through the motions. The fighting is just you pretending that you're making progress, but nothing ever really happens. You look at yourself and take an assessment and you're the same person, about the same person you were five years ago. Well, you're not learning much if you are. You have to constantly be challenging yourself to grow up. But eventually, that challenge becomes joyful. You see your failures, you see your ego, you see your fears, and they challenge you to do better. You don't go, oh no, you go, oh, look at that. That's something I need to work on. And it's a very positive thing, not a negative thing. So then your life becomes a, a life of joy rather than a life of struggle. And your, your challenges are positive, not overwhelming. But you have to start from wherever you are. The journey should not be terribly serious. The journey needs to be full of humor, full of lightness and fun. If this journey is one of slogging through, you know, the, the depths of your fear and misery, that can't go on for a long time. Otherwise, you'll get depressed and you'll quit. You have to not take yourself so seriously. I mean, it sounds like I'm saying, get to work, be serious. But the whole thing of growing has to be done in a, in a light attitude because the more you try, the harder you work at something, if it's coming from your intellect, the less likely you're able to get there. When it comes from your being level, you just accept it and it is, and that's okay, and you stay light. And when you're light and have a, a good positive attitude, that's when the changes take place. You see, so even the fighting can get in its own way. The idea that you're fighting this thing can become such a serious battle that you block yourself and that's another place of getting stuck. So the yogi path, the path of the warrior, also has its places where you can get stuck. You can be in perpetual war, but never win. You see, never actually get to where you're going. And your point isn't to be at war, your point is to grow up. Your point isn't to fight, fight, fight those fears, your point is to get rid of them, not just be in constant struggle with them. So that takes a lighter attitude. When you get real, real serious in that fighting, then you are part of the problem. Lighten up, take these steps with joy, not with, you know, seriousness in the sense that it is serious, growing up is a serious thing, but it's also a thing of joy. So grow up joyfully, grow up positively. Don't get stuck in fighting in the warrior's path. Don't get stuck in acting nice in the path of, of uh, service. And don't get stuck in surrendering, you know, in that path of, of surrender. Don't get stuck in, the, in any of those paths where you have your ego so pushed away that you no longer see it and therefore believe yourself to be you know, highly grown. It, uh, 
You always have to be a student. Yes, you can be helpful to others, you can be a teacher, but you always have to feel that you're learning. You always have to be in the mode, the mode of seeing a bigger picture, learning more. Whenever you get into the mode of self-satisfaction, that's when you'll start to go the other way. So hopefully that'll help those of you who are struggling with finding a path that works. And all of this came out of the, the last immersive that I did. I, I noticed people were struggling and struggling to find a path for themselves that would work. Most were trying too hard. They weren't taking it with a, with a light and a positive attitude so much as I got to do this, which is okay, but you can't stay in that I got to do this forever. You have to also find the humor in it. You have to look at your failures sometimes and just laugh at them and say, well, that's the way I am. Okay, I did that. Now what am I going to do about it? And then work on it without getting angry with yourself. You see, that anger is counterproductive. Don't look at it and say, oh, damn, look what I just did and said. That's awful. I thought I was better than that. That attitude is not helpful. It's better to have a lighter attitude and say, oh, wow, I, that really shows me where I am. Okay. Let's see if we can do better tomorrow, but with a light attitude, you see. So I don't mean it's frivolous. I don't mean you shouldn't be serious. I just mean that you can get in your own way by trying too hard with your ego to force yourself to become something you're not. You have to do it lightly. You have to do it with grace. You have to do it with care for yourself as well as for others, you see. So have fun on your path. Enjoy your learning. Always be open, always be skeptical. Never feel like you're done or almost done or, or uh, more done than others. That comparing yourself to others is just ego. Without the ego, you have no need for comparisons. You just are. Look at yourself and keep learning. Enjoy it. Have fun on your path. Don't get too wrapped up around what should I be doing. It's not about what you should be doing. It's who you are and changing yourself to be something else. That's the key idea. So all of these paths are useful. They're all profitable and you can get stuck in every one of them. So don't make it about the path. Make it about becoming unconditional love and that will work a lot better. Thank you, Tom. I know this will be helpful to many. Thank you.